Hi guys, so this is simultaneous equations where one of them is non-linear. So what we mean by one of them not being linear is if you look at example one there, the top one there, that is linear. So if I was to draw the line y equals x plus 3 on a graph, that would be a straight line, so it would be a line. However, the other one, whenever you see x squared in it, so the second one is actually quadratic there, so it, it's going to be a curve, so it has to be a curve. So one of them is a line and the other is a curve. So uh, that's just what that means, the, the heading. So a couple of things you need to understand before this and you need a basic understanding of is uh, one is expanding double brackets. Uh, another is factorizing, well actually solving uh, quadratic equations. So factorizing and solving quadratic equations. And then obviously as well then you need a, a good understanding of algebra and being able to manipulate equations and uh, move things across the equal sign and so on. So uh, you, this is um, kind of one of the more advanced things in algebra. So. Uh, Let's have a look anyway. So the steps are change the linear equation, the one without the squares, around so that x is in terms of y or y is in terms of x. So it doesn't matter which. Uh, to sub this into the nonlinear equation, 3 solve, you will often get two solutions as it will turn into a quadratic equation. And then for sub back in the solution or two solutions that you found that you get for x or y to find the other values. So we'll just go slowly through the first one anyway. Now it's for the first one it says y equals x plus 3 and also y equals x squared plus 5x minus 6. So for the first one, the step one there, you don't actually need to really do it because we have... Uh, x in y in terms of x at the start so x y equals x plus 3 so i'm going to take that x plus 3 then and i'm going to put it in so what's in this box i'm going to put it in instead of that y into the second equation so instead i'm going to write out x plus 3 equals x squared plus 5x minus 2 so i'm putting an x plus 3 in instead of the y in the second equation so now we've got an equation with just x's in it, so I can try and solve it. So if I'm gonna, what I'm going to do anyway is I'm going to move everything over to one side. So I'm going to subtract x from the left-hand side. Just to, move, just to move over the x, so I get 3 equals x squared uh, plus 5x. And I can put my minus x in there because it's x minus x and 5x are like terms. Minus 2. So that's equal to 3, so that's the same as 3 equals x squared, 5x minus x is 4x, minus 2. And then I can move over the 3 to the right hand side, so I can subtract 3 on both sides. So 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 2 minus 3. Uh, and then, so 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. And then, because I, I'm, I'm just going to move over to equal 0 on the other side, so put it beside the 5, just to make it look like a normal quadratic to solve. So x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. So now it looks more familiar. So now I'm going to go ahead and factorize it. So this is where we need to know how to factorize quadratic equations. So I'm looking for two numbers that would multiply to give me minus 5, but would sum to give me 4. So it has to be plus 5 and minus 1. And then that's going to allow me to find two values of x. So either x plus 5 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. So if x plus 5 equals 0, then x equals minus 5, because we subtract 5 both sides. 
if x minus 1 equals 0, we add 1 both sides, so x equals 1. So x equals minus 5, or x equals 1, so 1 or the other. So we've actually found out two values for x here. Now because with these I found out two values for x, I'm going to go and I'm going to find out two values for y as well. So I'm going to go right back to the start, and I'm going to take one of the equations. Now always take the one that's linear, the easier one, the one without the squares in it, because you could take the other one if you wanted, but it's just going to work out easier. So I'm going to take y equals x plus 3. I'm going to write that down again. So that's my equation from the start. And then in order to get my y values, I'm going to split it into two again. So uh, y equals x plus 3, y equals x plus 3. So I'm going to take the 1, and I'm going to sub it in for x there. And I'm going to take the minus 5, and I'm going to sub it in for x there. And that's going to give me two more values than uh, two. Well, it's going to give me two y values. So if I sub in a minus 5, I get y equals minus 5 plus 3. So therefore, y equals minus 2. If I sub in 1 for x, I get y equals 1 plus 3. So that's y equals 4. So there are all my answers then. So x equals minus 5 or 1. And then when x is minus 5, y is minus 2. When x is 1, y is 4. So you're so you're all, you're kind of just you're kind of getting four answers altogether here. My second example then is actually a little bit uh, trickier. So this is where we go back and look at our steps. This is where the first step comes into play. So we're going to change the linear equation, the one with the square, around so that x is in terms of y or y is in terms of x. So it doesn't matter which. So I'm just going to take x plus 2y equals 1 here first. And this is almost kind of like rough working. Now I'm going to change it so that I either get x equals something with y's in it or y equals something with x's in it. So it doesn't matter which, but you need to let x equal whatever or y equal whatever. Now it actually works out easier here if I let x equal because if I just move, if I just subtract 2y here, what I'll get is I'll get x equals 1 minus 2y. So now I have x equals something with y's in it. So y x equals 1 minus 2y. And like the first one then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub it into the one that is nonlinear. So the x squared plus y squared equals 1. I'm going to sub in my 1 minus 2y in for the x in that. So if I write in 1 minus 2y instead of x in that, I get 1 minus 2y to be squared plus y squared equals 1. So that step there, I've just put in 1 minus y instead of the x in that, and I've written it out. So because 1 minus 2, I'm just going to write 1 minus 2y multiplied by 1 minus 2y, because that's just 1 minus 2y to be squared. It means times by itself. And then I have plus y squared equals 1. Now, I'm going to multiply out these double brackets. So this is where you need to understand already how to multiply double brackets. So go back and have a look at that if you're not sure. But 1 multiplied by 1 is 1. 1 multiplied by minus 2y is minus 2y. Then minus 2y multiplied by 1 is minus 2y. And minus 2y multiplied by minus 2y is going to be plus 4y squared. Because minus 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 time multiplied by minus is plus uh, two times two is four and then y multiplied by y is y squared and then it's still got plus y squared equals one. So let's collect all the like terms here. So I'm going to get five y squared and minus two y minus two y is minus four y. That's a plus five y squared and I get one equals one. So I'm just going to put the 5y squared first, so the positive 5y squared first, the minus 4y next, and the plus 1 equals 1. Now I'm just, just going to move the 1 over to the other side uh, because I want to get everything over to the left-hand side. So I'm just going to subtract 1 from both sides. Uh, equals 0. So... 
uh, there's a couple of ways you can look at this then you can just kind of factorize it as normal because really it's just an expression it's not really a quadratic or you could look at it as if there's a almost a plus zero there so plus zero equals zero and then factorize it like a normal quadratic but whatever way you do it you should get y and then uh, 5y minus 4 or uh, you could get so y plus 0 5y minus 4 and that will equal 0 so then either y equals 0 or 5y minus 4 equals 0 so if 5y minus 4 equals 0 then 5y equals 4 and y equals 4 over 5. So those are my two y values. Now I need to get two x values. So I'm going to back and I'm going to sub in. I'm going to take this uh, bottom equation here. x plus 2y equals 1. Um, and you're going to use it but uh, I can actually use this one instead x equals 1 minus 2y because really that's the same equation so x equals 1 minus 2y so I'm going to sub in both of my y values in for y then so if y equals 0 well then uh, x equals 1 minus 2 times 0 so 2 times 0 is just 0, so x equals 1. So if y equals 0, then x equals 1. And the other option is x equals 1 minus 2 times 4 over 5. So if x equals 1 minus 2 times 4 over 5, so I get 1 minus 2 times 4 over 5 would be 8 over 5. So I'm actually going to get minus uh, 3 over 5. So x equals minus 3 over 5. So my uh, two y values are 0 and 4 over 5 and my two x values are 1 and minus 3 over 5. Okay, so here's two questions then. So if you want to take a few minutes to try these, so take your time on them and try not to make mistakes. So they, they should take a good bit of time if uh, time to do, so don't try and rush them. Uh, if you want to just pause the video there now and attempt them and then play it on and I'll go through the answers or at least try and get as far as you can through them. So the first question here, it's like example one that we did. Y is given to you already. So we know that Y is X minus five. Therefore, I can put that X minus five in for the Y in the nonlinear equation. So we get X, plus X minus five equals X squared plus X minus 14. If I move over the X to the other side, minus X, so minus five, equals x squared plus x minus x minus 14 and then the plus x minus x would obviously cancel out but I can add 5 to both sides then so uh, I get 0 on the left hand side and on the right hand side I get x squared but then uh, minus 14 plus 5 would be minus 9. So I get uh, x squared minus 9 equals 0. But I can just move over the equals 0 to the other side. So x squared minus 9 equals 0. Now this is actually difference of two squares.
in here so that's how you how you should really be factorizing that or what one, one another way you could look at it is you could look at it as if there's no x coefficients x squared plus 0x minus 9 equals 0 and you can kind of uh factorize it like a quadratic so you're finding two numbers that would multiply to give minus nine but would sum to give zero so that would be plus three and minus three or uh, you might have learned how to factorize difference of two squares and just be able to do it from that but one way or another you should get x plus three x minus three as your factors so I'm going to get two values for x then, either x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. If x plus 3 equals 0, then we subtract 3, so x equals minus 3. If x minus 3 equals 0, we add 3, so x equals positive 3. So x equals positive 3 or negative 3. Now I'm going to sub that back in, I'm going to take one of my equations again, so always take the linear one. So y equals x minus 5. So y equals x minus 5. So if I sub in minus 3 in for x, then I get y equals minus 8. If uh, x equals 3, I'm going to get y equals 3 minus 5 so 3 minus 5 is minus 2 so therefore x equals minus when x is minus 3 y is minus 8 when x is 3 y is minus 2 so those are all of my answers there and question 2 then is a little bit trick here again so I'm going to take my linear equation first so the one without the square so 7 plus x plus y equals 0 so what you should be doing here is you should be moving uh, something, two things over to the right hand side. Now, you could move over to 7 and the x, or you could move over to 7 and the y. It doesn't matter which. It'll just it'll affect which one, obviously, you sub in for then. But I'm just going to move over. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. So I get x plus y equals minus 7. And then I'm going to subtract y. So I'm going to get x equals uh minus seven minus y or you could have minus y minus seven there so if you did it the other way if you if you have y equals minus seven minus x then that's fine you're just subbing in then for y instead of x so because i get this here i know that x is minus seven minus y therefore i can take what's in that red box and i can put that in for x in this equation. So I'm going to write minus 7 minus y instead of x, so that has to be squared, plus y squared equals 29. And I'll go through this one a little bit quicker then. Uh, so minus 7 minus y minus 7 minus y plus y squared equals 29. Then I have to square out these double brackets, so I'm going to get 49 uh, plus 7y plus 7y plus y squared plus y squared equals 29. Then I'm putting all the like terms together, so I'm going to get 2y squared plus 14y. I'm just moving over the, uh, the y squared part to the start as well. Plus 49 equals 29. Then I can subtract 29 from both sides to move over the 29 to the left hand side. So I get 2y squared plus 14y plus 20 equals 0. Then because each of them are all uh, I can divide 2 in, uh, into both sides here. So if I divide both sides of the equation by 2, I get y squared. This just, this just simplifies the quadratic for me. I could co factorize it straight away, but this just makes it easier. So y squared plus 7y plus 10 equals 0. 
So now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give 10, but would sum to give 7. So I get y plus uh, 2y plus 5 equals 0. Therefore, y plus 2 equals 0, or y plus 5 equals 0. Uh, so subtract 2, subtract 2, either y equals minus 2, or subtract 5, subtract 5 y equals minus 5. So those are my two values for y. I'm going to go back up to the top again and pick out the one the linear equation. So x equals minus 7 minus y. So subbing in then uh, so x equals minus 7 minus minus 2, that's when you're subbing in minus 2, and then minus minus will become plus, so minus 7 plus 2 is minus 5. So x equals minus 5, or if I sub in a minus 5 in for y, it's minus minus 5, so x equals minus 7 plus 5, so that's minus 2, so x equals minus 2. So those are my four answers there. Uh, when y is minus 2, x is minus 5. When y is minus 5, x is minus 2.